Hey, I'm glad to have you here with me today. And again, we have, just like always, we have a fun topic to share with you. Today, we are going to talk about Costa Rica and the nine best things to do while you are in Costa Rica. So this is going to be fun. I know Costa Rica is probably on your bucket list because it's on most people's bucket list, I feel like, because it's just such an amazing place to go with wildlife, volcanoes, and beaches, and so much more. So we're going to talk about that. You can have adventures. You can travel with, in so many different ways to Costa Rica, and it's a perfect fit. So I have people who go on solo trips and go to Costa Rica, and I help send them to these amazing places. I have people go on honeymoons. In fact, I've got a honeymoon couple coming up just this next month. It's, I'm so excited for them to get to experience this fun location. You can travel with friends. You can travel with family or any other kind of a group. You can go with like as a work group with um, different coworkers as an incentive trip or award trip or things like that. You can, Costa Rica is an amazing destination for a wellness retreat. So that is what some solo travelers like to do is stuff that's more like a wellness type of package. And um, really Costa Rica has something for everyone. So no matter what you are looking for, Costa Rica is a little bit of it all. And it's so cool. So let's jump right in. And I'm going to give you nine suggestions. Now, don't expect that all nine of these you will be able to get to in one trip. It would be a pretty amazing go, 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 overwhelming kind of a vacation if you were able to fit in every single thing. So we'll just take these suggestions for what it's worth and fit in what you can on your next trip to Costa Rica. So number one, and these are not in any order of importance. They're just like nine really amazing things to do. Number one is soak in the natural thermal hot springs. So Costa Rica has these natural hot springs all across the country in different places. And they're formed by old volcanic activity that is not going on anymore. And yet the groundwater percolates down until it meets the hot rock like down inside the Earth's surface underneath the earth's surface and then it returns up to the surface and forms these pools that are called hot springs it's like a natural jacuzzi and they are really fun and amazing so it's just these thermal waters and they're just really relaxing and they also have rejuvenating properties for skin and circulation so they have all kinds of great benefits the areas that have more hot springs than others are la fortuna and Arenal, those areas particularly have some great ones. And just as a point of, you know, mentioning, we're not really talking about resorts or hotels today. We're just going to talk about activities, but there are some really great resorts and hotels that are close to these hot springs. And so in kind of, you want to have that kind of jungly hot springs, relaxing, rejuvenating type of experience in Costa Rica then that's probably where I would send you is to one of these properties that is really close to or kind of built around a hot, one of these natural hot springs because they're great. There is also another area besides La Fortuna and Arenal. It's called Guanacaste. And Guanacaste is closer to the beaches, the Caribbean side. And they also have a thermal river. It's called the Rio Perdido. And it's got a national park which is called Rincon de Via Vieja National Park. And there's about 10 hot springs in the area there too. So if you're staying closer to a beach area, there's definitely still a chance to go to the hot springs. You don't have to be staying inland. Anyway, so a hot springs would definitely be on a list of things to do in Costa Rica. Okay, item number two. Visit the Manuel Antonio National Park and see the wildlife. So wildlife is very diverse and very available all throughout Costa Rica. The Manuel Antonio National Park is the smallest national park in Costa Rica, but it's still huge. It has over a thousand acres and it's one of the most popular. So if you are in the capital of 
city of San Jose. It's about a three hour drive south of the capital. And there are tons of animal species here in the Manuel Antonio Park. There's capuchin, howler, and squirrel monkeys. There are sloths, iguanas, and a little animal called agutis. And this is a rodent, and it looks kind of like a large guinea pig. There's tons of butterflies and hundreds of species of birds, including toucans. So all kinds of great wildlife in the National Park of Manuel Antonio. And other things you can do in the area besides just see the wildlife, like if you're maybe visiting the area for a day or even if you're staying maybe in that area, there are some other activities. You can hike on the trails. You can play on beaches. It's not super far from the beach. Take surf lessons, go sport fishing, take a boat or kayak to a place called the Damas Island Mangrove Estuary. You could go whitewater rafting. You could visit the Naukaya waterfalls or go on a food tour in Manuel Antonio. So tons of things to do in the Manuel Antonio National Park area. Okay, number three is to go on a chocolate or coffee tour. So Costa Rica is very well known for both their chocolate and coffee. Costa Rican coffee is renowned worldwide for being exceptional. And then cacao and chocolate also originate in Costa Rica. So you could go on, this are just a few suggestions, a rainforest chocolate tour based in La Fortuna. And you, on this tour, you journey from the tree, the cacao tree to the finished product, and you get to see the whole process along the way. It's really in, informational. And of course, sample a traditional chocolate drink as part of your tour. There's a cool tour that's called Jaguar Chocolate and Waterfall. And this one's close to the Caribbean side of Costa Rica. And in this tour, you visit the Jaguar Rescue Center. And then you also visit a family-owned cacao farm and then walk to a waterfall. So it's kind of that a little bit of, you know, chocolate and animals and waterfall all in the same tour. Coffee tours, if you're interested in one of those, they are mostly found in the mountainous regions. So like Monteverde and La Fortuna. And there's also some combination tours that are chocolate, sugar cane, and coffee. So you don't have to just do one or the other. You can do combo tours anyway. So I would say chocolate and coffee would be high on the to-do list also in Costa Rica. Okay, so that was number three. Number four is to go surfing or windsurfing. Yes. This is true. Costa Rica is a great place for surfing and windsurfing. Just get some excitement on the waves. The Tamarindo Beach in the Guanacaste area, which is on the Caribbean side. So if you have looked at a map of Costa Rica, the Caribbean side and the Pacific side are on both sides of the country. And so on the Caribbean side, Tamarindo Beach is a must-visit destination for surfing. There are a variety of surf surf breaks that range from any experience level. You can be a beginner or an experienced surfer and get to enjoy the waters there. You can take surf lessons. There are local pros that are there to teach you or just head out to the waves if you're a seasoned surfer already. Tamarindo has several national surf competitions every year. And so those are fun. If you happen to be there at a time when one of the surfing competitions is going on, then that's kind of cool. But also it's a fun side effect of the surfing competitions is that several great restaurants and shops and some nightlife have all kind of grown up and sprung up in the area because of the surfing competitions. Now over on the Pacific coast, there is also surfing in the Manuel Antonio or Hermosa Beach areas. Uh, Manuel Antonio is great for beginners, especially on the southern end and around high tide. The northern end of the beach is great for more experienced surfers because it's a little rougher. Hermosa Beach is known, this is also on the Pacific side, known for having the most consistent waves. So if you just want consistency of the waves, then maybe check out Hermosa Beach. So surfing or windsurfing would be a fun activity to take up while you are in Costa Rica. Okay, number five, experience the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. In 2007, 
Costa Ricans voted the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve as one of the country's seven wonders. And it really is beautiful. The most popular way to kind of get the experience is just to go hiking, to go walking. There are walkways and paths that are built into the forest canopy. And so it's just amazing to go walking along these um, these elevated bridges and pathways and stuff to just go basically hiking through the jungle. Or another very popular way to explore the cloud forest is to ride zip lines. You could also go horseback riding. And it's just, it's famous because it's just abundant greenery, like green in every shade and everywhere you look. And these low level clouds, which is of course why it's called the cloud forest. Super biologically diverse. There are over 2,500 plant species alone in the cloud forest. And it also is famous for bird watching in the area. And if you know anything about bird watching, which I do not, but the rare Quetzal bird can only be found here. Out of everywhere on earth, this is where you would go if you wanted to see the Quetzal bird. All right. So the Monteverde Cloud Forest would be a really cool place to go. Number six, another really fun place to go is the Arenal Volcano National Park. So the Arenal Volcano area is known as the adventure capital of Costa Rica. Tons of zip lines in the area and you can like soar through the rainforest and have incredible views of the volcano and there's a lake and just of course all the greenery that's in the area. You can go hiking along the base of the Arenal Volcano. There are hot springs that you can soak in. You can ride the aerial tram. You can visit a waterfall called the La Fortuna Waterfall. Go on a sloth tour, go whitewater rafting, or you can even do a safari river float. So just floating down the river for like a safari wildlife kind of adventure to get to see wildlife. So, so many things to do. You can see why it's called the adventure capital of Costa Rica in this area because there's such a wide variety of things to do. Okay, number seven is explore the Tor Tortuguero National Park. I said that with a Portuguese accent because I speak Portuguese, I do not speak Spanish, but Tortuguero National Park is means tortoise or turtle. This is a really remote and biodiverse region. It's only accessible by boat or by plane. So it's not like you could just like drive there one afternoon, but that totally adds like this extra touch of adventure to your trip if you decide that you want to go there. It's just this dense jungle maze and it's just got winding canals and waterways through it. It really feels like the Amazon rather than Costa Rica or I guess just one part of Costa Rica. So it's just got this inside network of canals and mangrove areas lagoons you can go by boat or kayak or canoe anyway it's pretty cool tons of wildlife again just like a lot of the other places we've talked about monkeys sloths caimans birds and of course sea turtles the sea turtles are nesting on the beaches at, in the park and along the, there's a coastline and it is home to these mass turtle nestings so there's four different species of sea turtles here and just Kind of a word, I guess, to the wise. Turtle nesting season is generally between June and October. So kind of the summer months into the fall-ish. So that is when the turtle nesting season is. Anyway, so that would be a cool place to go if you wanted to spend some time like totally in the wilds and just be able to go by boat or by plane. The Tortuguero National Park. Okay, number eight. Let's go a completely different route and talk about the capital city of San Jose. So not everybody will fly into San Jose when you go to Costa Rica. In fact, if you are staying in the beach area, you would not fly into San Jose because that would be further away. But it would be fun if you are flying into San Jose, it would be fun to spend a day here either, either when you're arriving or when you're departing to give a little bit of time to kind of explore the city because it's just very lively and there's just a lot going on. There are markets all over the place. One of the most well-known or famous ones is called the Mercado Central. 
And it's like very colorful and it's got the fruits and the handmade crafts and the mouthwatering cuisine. I mean, it's just really a great taste of Costa Rican, you know, all the artifacts and foods and everything. Then there's the Jade Museum and it's an archaeological museum and it's got full of history about Costa Rican culture and all kinds of history and things. In San Jose, there's a huge variety of international cuisines. So it'd be fun to like look up your favorite and while you're there, go try out some amazing restaurants in the area. So the capital city of San Jose would be fun to visit if you are headed there. That's part of your trip. Okay. And number nine, we're already to number nine. And that is relax and unwind on the pristine Tamarindo Beach. So um this is another thing that is just really fun about Costa Rica. It's not just all jungles and volcanoes and wildlife, but they really have some great beaches. The Tamarindo Beach is the one that's on the Caribbean side. And you really can kick back, relax, soak up the sun. It's a really long, long beach with some great waves, like I talked about with the surfing earlier. It's got a great central location in Guanacaste. So people often use Tamarindo as a whole base, and then they just explore an area around there for a few days. There's another beach in the area called Langosta Beach. It's just south of Tamarindo. So if you wanted to kind of get away from the crowds, you could go check out Langosta Beach. They've got some great tide pools there on Langosta Beach, and it's a little more secluded. There's also a really good sea turtle viewing place in the area of Tamarindo Beach. It's called Las Baulas National Marine Park. And they've got leatherback sea turtles there in that area. So lots of great beachy things to do. Now, the Tamarindo and Guanacaste area are the areas where if you want a really great Caribbean, like an all-inclusive resort along the beach, this is where you would be staying. You would be in this area. And they've got some beautiful some really great resorts that are here. Further inland, the resorts in the country, you know, closer to the hot springs and things like that. If you were further inland and you were staying in one of the areas that is closer to the hot springs, then there is kind of a variety of resort and hotel options, places to stay in that area, those areas, from really kind of rustic and you know, not much included to being really amazing and like these beautiful five-star amazing properties. But they do not really have all-inclusive options inland like they do on the beaches. So if you wanted more of an all-inclusive type of stay, then you would definitely want to stay in the beach area. Okay, so I know we've just been talking about activities that kind of digressed a little bit, but aren't those some great amazing things that you could do in Costa Rica. If Costa Rica was not on your bucket list before, it probably is now because there are so many fun things you can do. I'm sure that you will just fall in love with like the landscapes and the wildlife and also the hospitality. The people are just so warm and hospitable and welcoming to their country. They just really want to share the beauty of their home with you. Like I said, you won't be able to do this entire list in one stay unless it was a very long stay and you actually could fit in everything. But the fun thing about having a list like this is to do what you can in one trip and then plan to come back and visit again. Renting a car in Costa Rica is not very expensive. So some people do like to rent cars. Some people um, don't want the hassle of renting a car. They just want to kind of stay in one home base and then do some excursions from that home base, and I can help you with either way that you want to visit. Both ways are are great, common, and um, I'm very happy to do either one. But either way, whatever you plan for Costa Rica, your Costa Rica adventures are going to be incredible. And I can't wait for you to experience this amazing country. Hopefully, this has kind of helped you get a sense for what Costa Rica is all about and get you excited for if you want to someday visit. Thanks for being part of this and joining me to talk about some great things to do in Costa Rica. Let me know if you have questions. I'd be happy to help you. Talk to you later.
If you've enjoyed this podcast, I would invite you to like, share, or leave a review. Let's help grow our wellness travel community.